Dear students, I am Dr. K. M. Kadireshan, working as the director of the Center for Graph Theory, Ayanadar Janaki Ammal College, Sivakasi. Today, let us introduce the concept of product of two subgroups in a group. You are all familiar with the binary operations in a group. So let us start from a simple question. What is 2 star 3? The answer is 6. Yes, the answer is correct if star is the usual multiplication. The second answer is 5. It is also true if star is the usual addition. The third answer is minus 1. It is also a correct answer if S star B is defined as A plus B minus A B. The fourth answer is 56. It is also a correct answer if S star B is defined by 10A plus 12B. So the answer for 2 star 3 depends upon the binary operation star. So in this way we define the product of two elements. Now let us generalize this concept. Instead of considering two elements, we consider a subgroup H of the group G and an element A, A in the group G. How to define the product H into A, product of a subgroup and an element? Here, motivated by the definition of A dot B, we define HA equal to the set of all products HA where H belongs to H. That means we multiply each element of H by A in the right hand side. The set of all such elements is denoted by HA. For example, if H is equal to H1, H2, H3, H4, H5 and A belongs to G, then HA is equal to H1A. That is, we multiply the first element H1 of H by A in the right hand side. Then we multiply H2 by A in the right hand side. In this way, the elements of H A are H1A, H2A, H3A, H4A, H5A. In group theory, this H A is usually known as the right coset of H in G. Now let us generalize this notion. Instead of considering a subgroup and an element, here we consider two subgroups. How to define the product of two subgroups? Suppose H and K are two subgroups of a group G. Then, motivated by the definition of H in A, we define HK equal to the set of all products H in K, where H belongs to H and K belongs to K. That means the elements of HK are the products of the form HK, where the first element H is an element of H and the second element K is an element of K. For example, if H is equal to H1, H2, H3 and K equal to K1, K2, then HK equal to H1 into K1, then H1 into K2, then H2 into K1, H2 into K2, H3 into K1, H3 into K3. In this way, we find HK. On the other hand, KH is equal to K1 H1. We multiply, first, the first element must be in H and the second element must be in H. So, K1 H1, then K1 H2, K1 H3, similarly K2 H1, K2 H2, K2 H3, these are the elements of KH. And we observe that this H1 K1 is entirely different from K1 into H1. So in general, this HK, the set HK and KH are not equal. Now what? can we say about the product of HK? Consider the symmetric group on three symbols. 
the elements of S3 are the identity permutation i 1 2 1 2 means 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 3 then the third permutation is 1 3 then 2 3 and 1 2 3 1 3 2 these are the elements of S3 this S3 is a group with respect to the product of permutations in S3 we take h is equal to i comma the permutation 1 2 and k is equal to i and the permutation 1 3 clearly this h and k are two subgroups of S3 now what is hk to find hk first we take an element in h then we take an element in k then we multiply the product and we find all such products so the elements of hk are i into i and then i into 1 3 then 1 2 into i and then 1 2 into 1 3 these are the elements of hk since i is the identity permutation i into i is i itself i into 1 3 is 1 3 1 2 into i is 1 2 itself what about the product 1 2 into 1 3 in this product the one element 1 goes to 2 and here 2 goes to 2 itself so totally in this product 1 goes to 2 now what is the image of 2 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 3 so the image of 2 is 3 now what is the image of 3 3 goes to 3 here and here 3 goes to 1 so the image of 3 is 1 so you get a cycle 1 2 3 so these are the elements of hk I observe that there are three, there are four distinct elements in HK, and four is not a divisor of six. Six is the number of elements in S3. If this HK is a subgroup, then by Lagrange's theorem, order of HK must be a divisor of order of S3. So four must be a divisor of six, which is not possible. Therefore, this HK is not a subgroup of S3. So the conclusion is. The product of two subgroups need not be a subgroup. So the general question is under what conditions on H and K the product HK is a subgroup of G. Let us give the answer in the following necessary and sufficient condition for product of two subgroups to be a subgroup. The theorem states that the product HK is a subgroup of G if and only if HK is equal to KH. Let us prove this result. Here there are two parts. In the first part, we assume that this KHK and the KH are equal. Then we prove that this KHK is a subgroup of G. And in the converse part, we assume that this KHK is a subgroup of G. And we prove that this KHK is equal to KH. So first we assume that KHK is equal to KH. Now our claim is HK is a subgroup of G. To show that KHK is a subgroup of G, it is enough to show that it is closed with respect to the binary operation and then whenever x belongs to hk its inverse x inverse belongs to hk it is enough to prove these two results so let us take two elements x and y in hk then by definition of hk x is equal to h1 into k1 and y is equal to h2 into k2 for some h1 h2 belongs to h k1 k2 belongs to k now let us find xy then xy is h1 k1 into h2 k2 which is equal to by using the associative law this can be written as h1 into k1 h2 into k2 now consider this element k1 h2 it is an element of kh it is given that hk and the kh are equal so this kh is equal to hk so your k1 h2 is an element of hk that means it is equal to a product of two elements one in h and another in k now note that this h1 h k1 h2 is not equal to h2 k1 it is an element of hk so the first element is in h for example h3 the second element is in k for example k3 so your k1 h2 equal to h3 into k3 for some h3 belongs to h and k3 belongs to k therefore this one becomes xy is equal to h1 into h3k3 into k2 which is equal to by associative law this is equal to h1 h3 k3 into k2 note that h1 and h3 are elements of h so this product belongs to h 
and this product belongs to K. So totally, the product of these two elements is in HK. Therefore, HK is closed. Now, X belongs to HK implies X is equal to HK. Not about its inverse. X inverse is HK inverse. HK inverse is by the inverse law. HK inverse is K inverse into H inverse. K inverse inverse into H inverse is null amount of KH. By our hypothesis, KH is equal to HK. So this KH is equal to HK. So your element X inverse belongs to HK. So whenever X and Y are elements of HK, the product XY belongs to HK. And whenever X belongs to HK, HK the inverse X inverse belongs to HK. Therefore, this HK is a subgroup of G. Now let us discuss the converse part. Conversely, we assume that HK is a subgroup of G. Claim HK is equal to KH. The method is direct proof. The left, the left hand side set is contained in the right hand side. Right hand side set and the right hand side set is contained in the left hand side. This is the usual way. So we start from an element X belongs to HK. That implies X inverse belongs to HK. Note that our assumption is HK is a subgroup. So we have used the hypothesis, namely HK is a subgroup in this place. So X inverse belongs to HK. Therefore, X inverse is equal to a product. The first element is in H and the second element is in K. So X inverse is HK, which is equal to, that implies X inverse of inverse is HK inverse. And by inverse rule, HK inverse is K inverse into H inverse. This K inverse H inverse is an element of KH. And what about X inverse whole inverse? It is nothing but X. So your X belongs to KH. So whenever X belongs to HK, X belongs to KH. Therefore, this HK is contained in KH. Now take an element Y belongs to KH. Therefore, your Y is equal to K into H for some K belongs to K and H belongs to H. And immediately don't write Y inverse belongs to KH because we don't know whether KH is a subgroup. HK is, is the, yes, a subgroup but we don't know about KH. So here Y belongs to KH implies Y is equal to K into H. Now find Y inverse. Y inverse is KH inverse which is equal to by the reversal law KH inverse is K inverse into K inverse which is element of HK. Now Y inverse belongs to HK. Now apply the hypothesis HK is a subgroup. So the inverse of Y inverse is also an element of HK because HK is a subgroup. So y inverse of inverse belongs to HK. That means Y belongs to HK. So whenever Y belongs to KH, Y belongs to HK. Therefore, KH is contained in HK. From 2 and 3, we have HK is equal to KH. Hence the theorem. Now let us discuss an interesting special case. Suppose H and K are subgroups of the abelian group G. Then HK is a subgroup of G. In an ordinary group, to show that HK is a subgroup, we must verify whether HK is equal to KH. But in the case of abelian group, you need not verify that condition. If H and K are two subgroups, immediately you can say that HK is also a subgroup of G. Because by definition, HK is equal to the products of the form HK. It is given that G is an abelian group, so HK is equal to KH. And here, it is the set of all products of the form K into H, where K belongs to K, H belongs to H. So it is nothing but K, H. So immediately we get H K is equal to K, H. Therefore, by our necessary and sufficient condition, our H K is a subgroup of G. So, in this presentation, we have introduced the product of two subgroups. In general, the product of two subgroups need not be a subgroup. But the product HK is a subgroup if and only if this HK equal to KH. And in the case of abelian groups, the product of two subgroups is always a subgroup. Thank you. Thank you.